Ja, man muss halt tecken. Bottom of the go off screen. Hey, we'll be getting started in just a few minutes. Um, I'm glad you guys checked your school email and realized we had an issue with our link and they're not able to fix it um, for me right now. So if your friends are sending you a message saying, hey, I can't get on, just make sure they um, tell them to check their school email. So that way um, they'll be able to get that link and be able to join with us. Um, also, it'll be recorded so we can make sure everybody has access to it. So we'll get started in just a few minutes. Um, so hopefully more people have a chance to check their email and be able to get on with us.
All right, we're going to go ahead and get started um, because I know um, a lot, it's a beautiful day. Um, people want to be outside and things like that. So I really appreciate you taking the time um, to join us today to learn a little bit more about high school registration. I know I've been working with the students, um, the A-Day students the last couple of days, um, some of the remote students today, and I'll be going back to ATMS um, the next two days to meet with the B-Day students. So I am Ms. Jessup. I am the ninth grade counselor. Um, at Wheatmore High School. I do ninth and 10th grade here for us. Um, so I'll be the ones working with your students while they're in eighth grade to prepare them for high school. So what I want to do today is just go over a lot of the information that I've already provided for the students, but also be able to go over in more detail a lot of that information that you guys have questions about. I worked out of middle school for eight years, um, so I know that this can be a very stressful time for students and parents and that making that big leap to high school. Um, so I just want to be able to ease people's minds. Um, we do have um, the live chat up. So if you're not using the school computer, you'll be able to um, send me a message so I can answer questions. If you do not have, um, if you are having to use a school computer, I have my school email up and that way at the end I can go through and check and see if anybody sent me an email to be able to answer questions that way also. So um, this has been a weird year with COVID and everything. So I appreciate you joining in and we'll just get started. So what I wasn't able to go over with your students in their limited amount of time is the true graduation requirements. And that is important for them to know. It's important for parents to know because I know they always have questions. Even my seniors will come up um, at the end, near the end of the semester and be like, am I good? Do I have everything we need? Um, and we were definitely going to be helping you with that along the way. We do check schedules every year. We check transcripts every year to make sure you are taking the right classes. But at the same time, I do want you to be educated on what it takes to get a high school diploma in North Carolina but also specifically in Randolph County. So what you will have to do, as you see on the screen, um, you have to get four English credits. So students will be taking English every year. It's really easy to keep track of which English classes you have to take because they're just labeled English 1, English 2, English 3, and English 4. So once students get to that English 3 level, they can start taking their English at an AP advanced level um, as well. For math, students have to have four math credits in order to graduate. So that is math one, math two, math three. And once you get to that fourth level math, there's a lot of options for students. It can be honors pre-calculus. It can be discrete math. Um, we have students who take math courses through the community college. So that fourth math option, there's a lot of different avenues people can go. So that way they're taking the path that's going to set them up for success, no matter what they want to do after high school. For science, that is the only core class that requires three credits in order to graduate. Um, so for those science credits, you take Earth and Environmental. You also take Biology as a 10th grader. And then that third science credit can either be um, Physical Science, Chemistry, or Physics. After that, we do offer other science classes students can take, but those are the three science classes that are required. For social studies, this is where there are some differences compared if you've had a cousin, a sibling who has gone through Wheatmore High School. The state of North Carolina changed the history requirements um, for last year's freshmen, so it also applies to you guys. So for that, you're still going to be taking four histories, but what those classes are, are, are different now. So as a freshman, you do take world history. Um, right now, there's still some debate of what order you're going to be taking them in because they're new. Um, but most likely it'll be civic literacy um, during um, 10th grade. And that's going to be talking about government, both on the national and the state level. In 11th grade, most likely you're going to be taking American history. So that's where the changes from our previous students. They take two different American history courses where they're consolidating it back into one for your grade level. The other and new course that a lot of people are excited about is economics and civic, um, personal finance. So basically that class is really going to be teaching you a lot of those things that everybody thinks you need to know when you're graduating as you're becoming an adult. A lot of those financial literacy pieces that help prepare you to go out and be on your own into the real world and manage your money and understand how all those different concepts um, take place. The other credit you have to get is a PE credit and is that health and PE. You'll be doing that as a freshman, and that's very similar to what you guys have already been doing all the way through middle school. We do a week of PE, and then we do a week of health. We do not require a uniform or anything like that. You just have to dress out and whatever makes you feel comfortable um, in tennis shoes, shoes and participate. That is the only PE credit that you have to take. That's um, So only as a ninth grader, you have to take it. You'll do one semester of it. If you enjoy PE, you can keep taking it. But if you have other interests or PE is just not your thing, you won't have to continue taking it after ninth grade. 
every other credit that you earn is considered an elective credit. So to earn a diploma in Randolph County, you have to earn a minimum of 28 credits in order to graduate. Most students are going to um, receive more credits than that. 28 is the minimum. So anything that is not a state requirement is considered an elective. So a lot of times kids are like, hey, am I going to have enough electives to graduate? Yes, you are. So anything that's not required by the state of North Carolina is considered elective. So even when you take a community college class or you take um, an extra science class or an extra math class, those are considered an elective because you're electing to take it because the state of North Carolina is not telling you to take it. The other thing I want you to keep in mind, because people will tell you wrong, <laughs> um, even after I've told the students, um, another kid will tell them, they're like, well, this kid told me, no, <laughs> um, is about the foreign language. You are not required to take a foreign language to graduate with a high school diploma. You do not have to have um, a foreign language in order to go to the community college. Where it comes into play is after you graduate high school, if you want to go straight to a four-year university, you do have to take two of the same foreign language. So we offer Spanish here at Wheatmore High School, but we also have access to a lot of different languages if students um, would like to take something else. So those are the graduation requirements. So I did a lot of talking about what is a credit, and that's where I want to explain a little bit more for, to you guys what a credit is. So basically, every time you pass a class, you earn one credit. So every class is important for you to for graduation, no matter if it's a core class, an elective class, everything is going to go on your transcript, and everything is earning you a credit towards graduation. You cannot earn a diploma just by just passing core classes. you got to get those electives in as well. So every class you take is important. So a lot of times students think, hey, if I take it as an honors level class, that's going to earn me more credits. And that's just not the case. So um, where the honors and AP and college level, where that comes into play is more about GPA. It doesn't factor into like the credits you earn. So every class you pass is a credit that you earn. And the other difference um, from middle school to high school is in middle school, you go to the next grade level is all or nothing. Even if maybe you failed a class, you can either be promoted to the eighth grade or you can be retained in the seventh grade. In high school, it's different. Whether you go on to the next grade level is based on the number of credits you have. So, for example, to be a 10th grader, you have to earn six credits your freshman year. You're going to be taking eight classes, so hopefully you're going to earn all eight credits. Um, so it does give you a little room for error, um, but that's totally going to determine if you go on to the next level. So let's say you pass all your core classes, but you fill all your electives. Um, you would only have earned four credits, so you won't be promoted to the next grade level. Let's say you, um, you earned seven credits and you failed English one. Yes, you go on to the next grade level, but that English one is a required class. So you have to retake that even though you're still going to be promoted to the 10th grade. So it's all about getting those right credits, passing your classes so that you can be promoted to the next grade level. So I know it can be confusing. Once we get you here at Wheatmore and you're actually a student with us, um, we do spend more time with you about teaching you this, um, these concepts, teaching you how to calculate your GPA and things like that. So that way, while you're actually doing it, it's easier to understand and apply it by looking at your classes and stuff. So this is an example of what our bell schedule looks like. So Wheatmore High School, we start our day at 820. Students can be dropped off at Wheatmore starting at 745, but we start our day at 820 and then we get out at 320. So our classes here, we're on what is called a block schedule. So no longer are students in periods um, where they're going to eight different teachers a day. Um, we actually only have the students taking four classes. And like they do at the middle school, we do have an enrichment block built in. And that's why you see five different blocks. You're truly only taking four classes, but we have that fifth um, class block in is just as that time to get extra help for students, see teachers. Um, on a normal school year, we do clubs during that time just to have everybody have a chance to be involved in something. Um, so that's what our schedule looks like. So our classes are 85 minutes. So that's usually the biggest um, transition those first couple days that you're sitting in class longer. They seem to go a lot faster because we have more time to cover material. It's not... Um, 45 minute classes and 60 minute classes. So most students really do enjoy this once they get adjusted to it, um, but it is a difference. Uh, so we do definitely want you to understand that. And then here, and I know it's a little blurry, um, your students have already seen this if they've met with me and then I go over it with them as well. But this is an example of what their schedule looks like. So you do not take your classes all year. 
So what happens is you will have four classes when you start with us in August. And we try to balance out your schedule. So that means we try to give you two core classes and two elective classes each semester. If you ever get your schedule and it's not balanced, you can ask me and say, Ms. Jessup, what are you doing? Can you fix this for me? Um, and that way I can get it balanced out. I do go over everything during the summer, all 700 and about 60 schedules that we have. Um, but for the most part, we get it right. But if you ever see you're not balanced, you can always ask me to fix it for you. It's no big deal. So what happens is you'll have those four classes. They start in August. They last all the way through about mid-January. And then at the end of those classes in January, you go ahead and take your exams for those classes. Then we always have those couple days off where it's a couple work days. And then we switch to second semester where you start um, for new classes. So by the end of the year, you will have taken eight classes, but you only take four at a time. So what the registration process is doing is where you're telling me what classes do I do you want me to build in your schedule? Because I only build in the schedule what you put on your registration sheet. I do not just randomly put students in classes. It's totally based on what you put on that registration sheet. And that's why it's very important that you think about your choices. You put what is best for you, not just what your friends are taking. Just because you put exactly what your friends are taking doesn't guarantee that you're going to end up in classes together. And then you might be stuck in a class that you don't enjoy thinking it was going to be with your friend. So make sure you're making the decisions that are best for you as a student and for what's going to help you in the future and be successful in high school. So all students received an email from me on Sunday um, that had their registration information. It, had a, it was really long. I had a ton of resources in there. It had their um, teacher recommendations from ATMS, but it also had the registration form. So if they don't find it in their email, they can always um, send me another email. I can send it to them again. That's no problem. Um, if they go up to their search engine and start typing in Jessup, um, they should be able to pop it up because I know sometimes students get a lot of emails. And um, so definitely to be on the look out for that. I did send it Sunday about mid-afternoon. So the first thing I want to talk to you about when we start picking classes is honors classes versus standard classes. And this applies at the freshman level to just your core classes. Now, as you progress through high school, electives do start being offered at the honors level. We offer honors level band classes. We offer honors level carpentry too. So a lot of students are able to get honors classes through their electives once they start getting to second levels. So what you guys are going to be doing is picking the level that you want to take your core classes. So it's very important that you find a good balance between what's going to push me and challenge me and make me a better student and learn, help me learn, learn, but also where I'm going to be successful. We want everybody, to really, especially freshman year, to get off to on the good foot, to feel successful, feel like they know what they're doing in their classes. So the teachers at ATMS did make recommendations um, for the students, and they are in the school email. So when students are thinking about honors and standard, a lot of times they're just thinking honors is more work. And while, you know, technically a lot of times it does have um, some longer assignments, some additional assignments, what you're thinking about in those classes is the expectation of the student and a lot of times how that material is delivered. So in an honors class, we do expect students to be able to do a lot of independent thinking, higher order thinking, do that questioning, be able to give them assignment and for them to be able to take it and run with it. Um, for example, maybe in an English one class, we might have them reading in a novel in class, but maybe even a reading in an outside novel as well. And they need to be able to come in and discuss it and be able to talk about the text and do work with it where maybe in the standard English class it's going to move a little slower, but then maybe they're going to read those chapters together and then go over, um, do the assignment then. So it's very important, like I said, to pick the right level that is for you. You can go to college taking honors classes. You can go straight to a four-year university taking all standard. It's about taking the class where you're going to be successful making good grades. So if you are going to take an honors class and you're going to end up making it a D in it, like that's probably not the best fit for you. I'd rather you take the standard version and make that A or a B. Now, I don't want you taking a standard version if, oh my goodness, it's every assignment, I'm making 100, I'm not really challenged. That's, that's not giving you what you need. So like I said, it's finding that balance um, so that way you're being challenged in your classes, but yet you're successful and you're also not like stressed to the max. So for those teacher recommendations, they are recommendations. They know you as students. They know with this weird COVID year, um, how things have gone for you remotely and things like that. But their recommendations doesn't mean that's what you have to put. 
So if you choose something that you weren't recommended for, so for example, if you just decide to take honors world history instead of standard world history, like you're recommended for, what I do is just make a note um, and kind of watch your grades for the rest of the semester. I do have access to you in Power School now. Um, that way I can be able to check on things and see how you go for the rest of the semester. If your grade is going well at ATMS by the end, we'll go ahead and stick you in the honors class. If you're, you know, you're still struggling, I'm probably going to, hey, let's stick with standard to start with. It doesn't lock you into any pathway or anything like that at high school. Hey, if first semester goes well, we can always look at adjusting second semester. And every single year, you will be picking your classes, whether honors or standard. It doesn't lock you into one way or the other. So really make those um, choices. Um, and same thing, if you pick all standard or and you were recommended for an honors, a lot of times I just make a note about it just to see if we need to have a further conversation about it as the year draws to an end. Electives, this is where students get very excited and, and hopefully we can find classes for everybody or they're going to enjoy. At the high school level, we do offer a lot more electives than what they do at middle school. So they do get a lot more of a choice. So what's going to happen is next year, students will get to take four different electives. Um, you get to pick three of those because one of them, remember, has to be that health and PE. After ninth grade, you'll get to pick all your electives. So what's going to happen is you're going to pick seven different electives for me. You're going to get three. Your top three choices that you pick are the ones that you really want to take. You're, they're the ones like Miss Jessup. These are the classes I really like. I'm very interested in them. Please sign me up for those classes. The numbers four through seven, those are the classes where, hey, I like them. I'm willing to take them. They're just not my favorites. So those are my backups. So you are any class you pick one through seven, you may get on your schedule. Not every class is offered every block. Classes do have caps on them. Um, so, for example, some of our hands-on classes like construction and automotive, there's a cap of 20 students. And students do not just take um, electives with just their grade level. So, for example, in automotive, I have ninth and 10th graders take that automotive service fundamental, and there's only 20 students can get in there. So it might just not work in your schedule or things like that. So just remember, anything you put, you do have an option that it might end up in your schedule. There's no person who's going to get all alternates, though. I do go back and check that because I do want to make sure you get a schedule that you're going to enjoy your freshman year because just getting off to a good start. I know that's very critical. So um, just make sure you really think about those choices. So I'm going to X out for one second. Um, so the registration form, um, I wanted to show you that real quick. So all the students did receive this and all these resources are also on the Wheatmore homepage. So if you go to the Wheatmore website, we do have um, a big logo here that says rising ninth grade registration and course information. So if you do click on that, I do have a form that has a ton of videos. So it has the registration form, it has the program of study students received or will receive if they're a B-Day student. If you have questions about GPA, what does that mean? I created a video for that. I have a video about driver's education because I know um, I've had a lot of questions about that from the middle school students. And then there's um, videos about the core classes, what the difference between the honors and standard are, what they cover in those classes. And then every single elective that you guys can pick from, I do have a video so you can learn more about it. So I definitely want you to spend some time, especially on these electives, watching those videos, learning what you're going to do in those classes so you're going to feel good about it. Then with that elective, that form, all you have to do, the student will just go in there, put their demographic information, what's the best phone number, so that way if I have, sometimes the numbers in PowerScore are not the most up-to-date or the emails are not just as up-to-date as we'd like for them to be. So this way, if I need to get in touch with you over the semester or during the summer, I can make sure I can get in touch with you. I don't like to have to just fix a schedule based on what I think, since I don't know you yet. So I definitely want to make sure I can reach out to you and say, hey, here's what I'm seeing with your schedule. What would you like for me to do with it? Then I have a short little video, um, just some reminders about core classes. And then all the students have to do is go through and click which core class that they would like to take. Same thing for electives. It gives them a short video of some reminders as they're picking electives. It has the different course descriptions. And then all they do is a drop down menu and they get to choose their electives. So every elective can only be chosen one time unless it's a cultural arts class. Cultural arts classes can be repeated for credit. So if you're a band or chorus student and you want to be in band and chorus all year long, I do need you to pick it twice. Now, you can pick it in your top three and also as an alternate if you want to. 
or you can put both um, choices in um, your top three if you want to take it all year. So that also applies to art if you want to take it all year and theater. So like I said, all the resources are on the Wheatmore website for you guys to have access to. Um, I'm going to leave them up even after the registration period is over. So that way, if you want to go back and look at anything, um, feel free to do that. If your student has already submitted their form, because I know I have students who have, and maybe they do not um, share this information with you before they did it, and you didn't need to make some corrections, you can just resubmit the form. It does timestamp it for me, and then the most current one is the one I would use for them. So the due dates for registration. So for a, depending on what day you're assigned is what day it's due. So eight A students, I need their registration form um, submitted to me no later than Monday, March 15th. So that's this coming Monday. My fully remote students is Tuesday, March 16th. And my B day students is Wednesday, March 17th. So that's just to give some time for as I'm able to get to them since um, I couldn't go visit everybody all at once. But the reason why it's important that we get it by the due date, I am having follow up meetings with students. So 8A students, you're going to submit it on have no later than Monday. Of course, you can submit it early. I don't mind that at all. But I'm going to be going back to ATMS on Tuesday with my career development coordinator, um, Mr. Spencer. And we're going to have ind quick individual meetings with each student. We're going to go over what they chose, make sure it's right, answer any further questions they have. If something's wrong, we'll just make a quick correction and things like that. For my fully remote students, it's going to be the same thing. Um, Wednesday of next week, I'll be having individual Google Meets with them. I have emailed out the link where they get to pick a time um, for that Google Meet with me. So that way we can do the same thing with them. Talk about what your choices you made. Also answer any questions you have and things like that. I do find the middle schoolers, since y'all don't know me very well yet, y'all ask a lot more questions when it can be more one-on-one. -on -one. And same thing for my B-Day students. I'll actually be going back on Friday after the check-ins um, to meet with students and to do those individual conferences. So please try to make sure um, you have those ready. So that way I like to get it organized. So that way when I go back over, I have all the information ready for you. And we can really just focus on having a good conversation. So a couple, that's really all there is to registration. It's going over the information, submitting the choices. You know, if something happens between here and the end of the school year, and maybe you're not doing as well in the course as you thought you were going to, to or have been doing, feel free to give me a call. And if we need to make some adjustments, it takes me basically from now all the way till August to build the whole schedule for the school and make all the um, schedules for all the students. So if there's ever anything that comes up, feel free to reach out to me. Even while you're at ATMS, you can still give it, contact me and I'm happy to help in any way that I can. So what I want to do for just a, a minute is kind of go over some of those topics that um, I know students always have questions about and maybe will be helpful information for you. So one is um, career and college promise. So I know the early college already went down to um, met with ATMS students about applying and early college is a fantastic opportunity for students. However, I also want you to know that you do have the opportunity to take community college classes while you're at Wheatmore High School. If you want to work and get that full associate's degree, you can do that while you're in high school. The difference for us is it doesn't start until your junior year. So as long as your GPA is a minimum of a 2.8 unweighted GPA, so that means basically you've done well in your classes in ninth and 10th grade, you're eligible to take community college classes for free. We have about over, I would say about 215 students every semester who participate in community college classes. And the great thing is we take advantage of any opportunity that we can. I have students who take classes through Randolph Community College. I have students who take classes through Guilford Tech. Um, so GTCC and also Davidson. So we are able to get students in anywhere that offer the programs that they're looking for. So not only is it those um, college transfer classes like psychology and English and things like that, they open up a lot of different of those more career pathways for them also. Our students take welding, automotive. I've had students go up to GTCC and do the aviation program. So basically anything you're interested in, usually I can find a way to get it for you, whether it, we might have to wait till junior year when the college classes open up to us or we can get it through North Carolina Virtual Public High School. So anytime you're like, hey, Miss Jessup, this is something I really want to do. Talk to me about it. We're, I want to find a way for you to experience it in high school so that way you can see if you really like it, but also while it's free. Um, so the community college classes are 100 percent free no matter which community college that we use because it's a state program. 
So that is definitely an opportunity that we, more students do get to participate in. Um, our RCC actually comes to our cam campus and teaches two classes for us every year. They teach a statistics class and a psychology class on our campus just for Wheatmore students. All right, the next thing that I know a lot of you have had questions about is driver's education. Um, I know you're getting to that age where you can start signing up to take it and then you're excited about being able to drive. And that's where a lot of my questions come in. So just remember for driver's ed, it is tied to your grades here at school and even at ATMS. So once you get to the high school, since you're taking four classes, you have to pass um, three out of four classes in order to get your permit, but also maintain your license. If at some point in time you're failing more than that, we have to send into the state that says that you're no longer eligible and they revoke it. So remember, your grades are important if you want the privilege to drive. So all of driver's ed is actually scheduled through the county office. It's not scheduled through Wheatmore, even though a lot of times we make the call um, about the driving part and things like that. All of it comes through the county office. So um, I'm going to show you how to get to the website. So that way you can register right now. Um, when I looked at it today, it was saying you're going to have to be 15 in order to register just because they're um, behind with driver's ed because of COVID and, and things getting behind last year. But basically from the Wheatmore website, all you do is click on student resources and then we have a driver's education tab and that's going to take you to the page at the bottom. It has Mr. LeGlue's um, email and phone number because he's over driver's ed for the um, entire um, school system. So if you're interested in driver's ed, take a look at that page. It, what it does is it posts what birthday you have to have in order to sign up for the class. This year is different where it's more the students have to use their school email in order to register. So it's definitely going to have to make sure the student takes part in the registration process since it has to be through their school email. So if you have questions about it, hopefully I can answer. Um, so there's a lot of times we do, but um, that's driver's ed. And the last thing I really want to talk about real quick is athletics. I know I have questions about that every year. So at the high school level, every ninth grader starts off eligible for athletics. Once you start with us, you do have to maintain passing three out of four classes. So um, just something to keep in mind. Um, we do offer a lot more sports than what the middle school offers. So in the fall, we offer volleyball, football, cross country, women's tennis, men's soccer and cheerleading. In the winter, we offer basketball, wrestling, swimming. And in the spring, we do track and field. Um, we do golf, um, baseball, softball, women's soccer and men's tennis. So. Even if you didn't play a sport in the middle school or you got cut or, hey, I've never played a sport before, we have a lot of things for you to try. We love for you guys to come out. So you just have to remember, um, even maybe you got cut in middle school. Um, and I worked out of middle school for a long time and I played middle school sports. And once you get cut, you're like, oh, I should never do this again. I, I don't want you to have that attitude coming into high school. We want you to come out. We want you to participate. Um, so for me, it's all about you getting involved in things, whether it's athletics, whether it's in our cultural arts program, whether it's through our clubs, through our classes, or just extra programs that we have here. The more involved you are in school, the better off you're going to be, the more you're going to enjoy it. So I definitely want you to get involved in stuff. We do have more than just athletics. Um, we'll be talking a lot more about what clubs and stuff we have to offer for you guys in August when we, we provide you with the schedule and things like that. So that's definitely something to keep in mind. So if you do have the live chat and you want to type in any questions to me, I'd be happy to answer those. And I'm also going to pull up my email so that way I can see if anybody's sending me an email with questions. So if you have questions, I'd be happy to answer them. So one question a student asked, if you took a language other than Spanish, does it still count as your credit? Yes, you can take any foreign language um, and that will count as your um, two that you need. So as long as consecutive. So you can't do you can't do German one and Spanish one in that count. It has to be two years of the same language. So Spanish one, Spanish two. I've had kids take German one, German two. I've had students take Russian, um, Latin. Um, we've had kids take Japanese. So whichever language you are interested in, we definitely can um, let you, um, that does count for you. All right. So the, another question I have is when and how can we expect a schedule? So schedules are always available to you guys in August. Um, I know this year they changed the school date. So it definitely changed when I, 
when I pass them out. But typically I give them in August. Um, what we usually do this past year was different and I had to email them to students. But historically what we do, and I'm hoping to be able to do again next year, is we have a day just for freshmen. We pass out freshman schedules before we pass out any of the other grade levels. So that way we can have you guys to the building let you have your schedule. That's when I like to do tours of the building. So that way you have your schedule right there with you. And it's going to make a lot more sense looking at our hallways and where classes are when you actually have your schedule. So we make you come to campus and get those. If for some reason I do have, um, sometimes kids are like, oh, on days that you're passing out the schedule, we're on vacation. We're not going to be in town. If I need to send it to your email, I can always do that for you. That is no problem at all. All right. Other questions? All right. All right, so so far, I don't think I have any other questions. If you end up having more questions, feel free to give me a call at Wheatmore High School. You're, you can send me an email, however you would like to reach out to me, whether it's currently with registration or as the year progresses or over the summer. I do have a tendency to work the majority of the summer, so it's easy to get in touch with me. Um, so I hope you have a great rest of your eighth grade year. I know this has been a challenging year for you. Um, I know a lot of students right now are starting to feel burned out, especially as the, you know, we've been doing this remote thing for a long time. The weather's turning really nice, but I just, you know, stay focused. You can do it. Make sure you're using your resources. Um, talk to your teachers. If you're struggling, you definitely see Miss Lomax. Reach out to me. Anything we can do for you um, so that we can just um, help you. Um, so what we can do, so I, I know we had an issue with our link and we had to change it at the last minute. Um, so this is recorded and I will get it posted for you guys. Um, the other thing I can do, if I can get this to actually do what I want to do. Hold on one second. So everything I talked about, so I will be posting um, this so you can watch the full thing, um, but it is about um, 40 minutes. But anything I've talked about, I actually created an individual video for anyway. So if you go to the Wheatmore website and right here where you see the logo rising ninth grade, if you click on that, it's going to take you to this page right here. And all these links are videos. So everything that we have and I talked about is on here. So if you don't want to have to watch the full 40 minutes of me talking um, and you'd rather just hit the hot spots of things that you're interested in, you can definitely do that. So like I said, it talks about how the high school schedule works. Um, it talks about what a credit is. I actually show you how to calculate GPA in that, um, driver's ed. So all the information I have covered, it is on there. And we will have it available for you guys to be able, usually we link it to the website so that way you can click it on there as well. So will students still need laptops next year? So most, I mean, you know, our students on a normal year use computers a lot just for research purposes and things like that. Um, laptops, if, you know, if we need them in the sense that we need them this year, you will be able to check out laptops with us. We have plenty of um, Chromebooks for students so that way we can check them out. We've been checking out multiples to the same family so that way students are not having to share. So we definitely have access to that. Um, unfortunately, we don't know what the year is going to look like next year. Um, everything I'm seeing is kind of progressing to um, where things are going to be back to a little bit more normal, fingers crossed. But um, we definitely have plenty of technology. We have hotspots for students. We have the Chromebooks and everything like that. If, um, students will need that. Other questions? Well, I will leave it on until I see everybody gets off in case people do have a little few more questions. But I definitely appreciate you um, coming on tonight. Um, and then, I, like I said, I apologize that we had an error with the link and we had to get it corrected. So I appreciate it. And like I said, everything is on our website. We'll also be posting this. Um, and like I said, reach out to me if you have any questions.
anybody else has questions, you can feel free to post them in there or you can shoot me an email so I can answer them or you can get with me later. <laughs> All right, it looks like we got most people going off. Um, so we'll probably go ahead and end it. So that way um, with the recording, if people need anything, feel free to reach out to me. I'm Ms. Jessup. Um, the students can find me in their school email, but it's also is l2jessup at randolph.k12.nc.us. Have a great evening.